Hi everybody, welcome to episode two of Nerd Butler. Today we're going to talk about cord cutting and whether or not it makes sense for you to get rid of your cable subscription. Uh, we've changed the format up a little bit. This video will definitely be appearing in some other places like YouTube later on with a little post-production. Uh, it's also going to show up on the Nerd Butler website as well. But to start it off, we're going to do it on Facebook Live. Uh, we're going to try a few little things with the whiteboard and see if that works. So uh, we're also doing this on the Nerd Butler uh, Facebook page instead of my personal page. So viewership is going to be a little low today. We're going to share it and get some more views that way. But I hope you'll check out the Nerd Butler Facebook page and follow us so you'll get notified when these shows go live. And you can join in, ask questions, and leave comments. So today I want to talk about um, getting rid of your cable subscription, which is something I have dreamed of doing for years. Uh, and we finally did it. We finally got rid of our, our cable about a month ago uh, after a lot of research and a lot of hassle and, and not a small amount of nerdery. So I want to walk through uh, the requirements, the steps it's going to take, the equipment you're going to need, uh, and what you can expect from your post-cable experience versus your current cable experience so that you have some information that will uh, let you make that decision for yourself. And if you have any questions, even after this video is posted, wherever you see this video, leave a comment, ask a question, I will definitely get back to you. Also today, we're going to be working on the whiteboard a little bit just so I can make some notes so uh, you guys have a reference. I'm hoping you can see this. I would also appreciate any comments you have about how legible it is behind me. Um, we can, we're definitely going to do a write-up on this on the website with all the details. And you can rewind the video and listen to what I said again. But uh, hopefully the board will uh, help you out a little bit like a college lecture hall. I apologize for that, but we'll try and keep it interesting. So cord cutting. First things first, let's get this out of the way, because when I first thought about getting rid of cable, I thought I'm going to save so much money and all the services that are coming, I'm going to be able to uh, use, see all the channels I always saw, have all the features I always saw, and it's going to cost me so much less than it did before. Let's set that aside right now. For the same set of channels you've always had, or something pretty close to the same set of channels you've always had, you're probably not going to save any money. I don't think it's going to be more expensive, but that's one of the things we'll talk about is, is how to make that decision. This is not a money saving opportunity. Um, if you want to save a bunch of money, get an antenna for your house, hook it up to your TV, call your cable company, tell them you don't need that anymore. Um, but what we're going to talk about is trying to replace cable as fully as possible with as few uh, workarounds, as few services, as few pieces of equipment as possible. So First of all, you're not going to save money. Just set that aside. We're going to ignore that for the rest of the talk. I'm going to talk about the cost a little bit so that you can make a comparison to your current cable offering. Um, but you're really not going to be like cutting your bill in half or anything like that. So what we're talking about is a combination of a TV antenna and some streaming services. All right. So first things first, TV antenna. I saw an article a couple weeks ago talking about how Millennials have just discovered this fabulous new source of free TV they didn't even know was legal. You just plug in this thing to your television, and there's 50 or 60 channels there that you can watch in HD. Okay, well, while some people may not have grown up with a television antenna, I do think that the majority of folks know that there is broadcast television. So let's, let's get that out there. We all know there's broadcast TV, right? I'm old enough that I grew up with a TV without a remote, walk up, change the channel. We only had four or five channels. Um, but I think most people know there's broadcast TV. If you are close to a major metropolitan area, and by close I mean within 15 miles line of sight, not driving time, but in a straight line, if you're within 50 miles of a major metropolitan area, you probably have 50 to 80 broadcast channels available to you, most of which are going to be in HD. So if you have a good television and you have a good antenna, you're going to see HD quality, and that's going to be really important for some of the things we talk about. So for the full replacement package for cable, you're going to need two things to start with. You're going to need um, a good Internet provider, and everybody's going to ask how fast of an Internet connection do I need. That's really going to depend a little bit on what you intend to do. If you are in a small apartment or a house where you only have one television and you only have one device that's going to be watching uh, HD quality programming off of the Internet at a time, you can probably get away with, something like 20 megabits per second as your speed for your internet. Um, with, with 20 megabits, you can probably stream one, maybe two HD streams at a time in your house. That might be your iPad. 
It might be a device connected to your television. It might be on your computer. If you have a house with two or three kids and they're all in their separate rooms and they all have TVs all over the house or you're downstairs and, and your spouse is upstairs and you're watching two different shows, that 20 megabits a second is probably not going to do it. What I would shoot for is 50 megabits per second. So this one is okay. 50 megabits per second is good. And if you can get 100 plus megabits per second, that's great. All right, so this is our internet. This is the first thing we need, and this is key. Internet. Spelling is important. All right, so that's what you have to have to start with for the streaming services, okay? More than the speed, what I'm concerned about is the reliability of your internet. So if you have an internet connection that tends to go out for some reason, if you have an internet connection that is um, tied to a line that your entire neighborhood is using, then during prime time at night from 7 to 11 p.m. when everyone is watching television together, you might have worse speeds than you do before. So what I want you to do to check your current internet connection, just go to Google and Google speed test all right go to google type in speed test it's going to pop up a little box there's a button that says run speed test and it's going to tell you exactly what your upload and download speeds are um, for your internet connection now for what we're talking about today i only care about the download speeds all right so what i would do is do this google it run the speed test i would run it um, a couple of times within a couple of minutes and make a note of what the speeds are I would do that maybe a couple nights in a row if you're if you're really serious about researching this. Do this on a couple different nights in a row, particularly heavy TV nights like Thursday night, um, Sunday night, you know, when, when the big shows are on. HBO during Game of Thrones um, had a bit of a problem at the series premiere because so many people tuned into their streaming service that things slowed down. Now, that's HBO's problem and they fixed it. But in your neighborhood, if you have a whole bunch of people that are using Netflix all at once, the internet speed in your neighborhood may get a little slower. So do this speed test um, on a couple of different days, at a couple of different times of day, a couple of times each time you do it. This whole thing takes less than a minute, all right? So you're talking about a five-minute commitment a couple of times a week. Just test it out. Look at your cable bill, see what you're paying for in these speeds, and then do the speed test and see what you're actually getting, okay? So once you've done that, you can determine whether or not your internet connection is strong enough. So that's the very first thing you're going to have to have, all right? So here we go, 20, 50, 100. Okay, good, great. Find out what that is by Googling speed test, all right? The second thing you're going to need, and I think in order to get a full range of channels, for sure, you're going to want to get a broadcast antenna. And I'll tell you why. The biggest thing, well, there's a couple different use cases. If you want to watch live sporting events, you're almost going to have to get an antenna because there's really only two places where all of your local affiliates, ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, PBS, there's only two ways to get all of those reliably. One is from your cable company, and one is from over-the-air broadcasts. Every time we say over-the-air now, we're going to say OTA, all right? This is going to be important when we do some searching later on. So we'll do our college professor thing. Over the air. Good old-fashioned antennas. Used to be called rabbit ears, they don't look like that anymore. So, you can pick up an antenna for as little as 20 bucks. I would recommend, if you're planning on getting rid of cable and making this the way you consume your television, that you plan on spending around 50 bucks on an antenna, a nice one. Um, I'm lucky enough to be in a house where I have an attic space, so instead of having the antenna right next to my TV, I put it up in the attic, we have all the cabling, um, and it works really well. The digital antennas that you can get for 20 bucks, they will work. The closer you are, the better. So if you're inside a major metropolitan area, um, those antennas will probably work okay. If you're in the suburbs, not really. And if you're in a rural area, um, <laughs> Ruth says her antenna does still look like rabbit ears. Um, if you're in a rural area where you're maybe 25 to 50 to 75 miles away from the broadcast towers, you're going to need to spend a little more on antennas. They have antennas on Amazon rated up to 150 miles. Those tend to be directional. So if you have two cities sort of equidistant apart 
and you want to see the channels from this city, you point the antenna that way. And if you want to see them over here, you can point it that way. You can spend a ton of money on a setup that's motorized, and you program it to tell it where the different things are, and it'll swing around to pick up those channels. But starts at $20. It goes up to maybe $150. I would recommend something in the $50 range. You want something that's more than just that flat little panel. The other thing you're going to have to have, and I found this out in my house because I have reasonably new televisions, um, the TV in my living room doesn't have a tuner in it. Um, it doesn't have the hookup to receive the antenna signal. And we'll talk about how to get around that in a minute. But the TV in my office has that. You're just looking for that little threaded coaxial connection. And if you look at the read-up, I'm sorry, if you look at the write-up of this video on the website, which will go up in a day or so, I have pictures of what that looks like in case you're not sure. But it's that little coax connector that your cable company probably screwed into your modem. All right? So over the air is going to be really essential, especially if you would like to watch live sporting events. So NFL football, um, a lot of the basketball is on cable now, and, and we'll get you to that in a minute. But um, baseball games, um, you know, local news, certainly, um, your local PBS station, things like that, you're going to need that antenna. Um, so what else does your cable company offer you that you really like? I'm sure that you, most of you probably have a DVR service, so we're going to talk about how to get that as well. The first thing you need is an over-the-air antenna, and so we're talking about cost now. This is a around a $50 cost one time. Now, if you buy a smaller antenna, it's only probably going to hook up to one television, so you might need to replicate that for each TV. If you live in a house like I do and you have a central point where you can connect those things, you're going to um, buy one big antenna and you're going to hook all the TVs to it. No matter what antenna you buy, you're looking for the word amplified in the name, all right? It's not enough to just have a, what is essentially a piece of wire running from the outside world to your television. So you're looking for an amplified antenna. If you buy an antenna that's not amplified, it's going to be cheaper. The one I put in my attic was 30 bucks, but then I spent another 20 bucks on an antenna amplifier to take the signal that's being received and boost it up so I can distribute it throughout my house. So if you're hooking up more than one television to a single um, antenna, you're definitely going to need an amplifier, um, and they're called, I think they're just called antenna amplifiers on Amazon. If that's what you search for, that's what you'll find. So let's say the amplifier amplifier is going to be about $25 one time. All right, so 75 bucks once and a little bit of work from you to get everything hooked up, assuming all of your TVs have TV tuners in them, okay? So this is going to get you a whole bunch of HD channels. Um, it's going to get you your local channels, live sporting events, NBC Nightly News, the Today Show, all the stuff you remember from broadcast TV, if you're old enough to remember broadcast TV. Um, it's gotten a lot better. There's a lot of crazy channels out there now. Um, QVC in my area has like seven different broadcast channels doing different lines of products all the time. Uh, I can watch uh, home shopping whenever I want. One of the things I found really exciting when I kind of came back to broadcast TV is that since the switch to digital five or ten years ago, um, every, every channel can now broadcast multiple channels. So the PBS station here has one channel that's just home improvement, just cooking, um, just creative shows. Meanwhile, they have the regular... PBS programming, Masterpiece Theater, news programming, that sort of thing on another channel. So the selection from broadcast TV has exploded. If, if you remember the time when there was only four or five or even three channels, um, that is not the experience you're going to have when you hook your antenna back up. So over the air, an antenna and an amplifier, definitely what you're going to need. Let's talk about streaming services because this is where you're going to get a lot of the cable channels that you're used to. This is where you're going to get CNN. It's where you're going to get ESPN. It's where you're going to get um, the cable networks you're used to. Again, a lot of this choice is going to depend on what it is you need from channels. If you're a, I draw a big line here between households that care about sports and households that don't. If you care about sports, we're going to kind of have to go one way, and if you don't care about sports, we can go a different way. So, Big streaming services. Most of you probably heard of or have a Netflix subscription. And maybe Ruth can tell me because I don't remember, but a Netflix subscription can start below 20 bucks a month. And you can pay a little more for things like multiple streams uh, if you need to. But let's say this is 20 bucks a month. 
We're using round numbers here just so you can make a comparison. I love Netflix. I think it's great. I think um, it it has lots of original programming, and what you're going to find more and more, $8 says, Ruth, great. So let's change this. I'm just going to use round numbers still, but it starts, let's say, $10 a month. Thanks, Ruth. Um, at $10 a month, that's a pretty good investment. Lots of original programming. Now, there's some things leaving. Everybody has their own streaming service. Everybody who has a streaming service is producing their own content. So a lot of this stuff um, you're only going to find on Netflix. You're only going to find on Amazon Prime. You're only going to find on HBO. Um, so Netflix is a big one. I am also an Amazon Prime member, and I love it. There are lots of benefits to it. One of them is their Prime video service. and Amazon Prime, I think, is up to something like $120 a year. So we're going to call that another 10 bucks a month. So you get lots of other benefits like Prime delivery, uh, same-day delivery if you're in the right metro area. Like There are tons of benefits to Amazon Prime, but if I'm only looking at desk to replace my cable, it's still $10 a month. Now, you pay it annually, but that comes up to $10 a month as well. Um, as far as the bulk of... Network television, um, TNT, all the Turner channels, TNT, TBS, CNN, Headline News, all of those types of channels, Disney, Nickelodeon, all that stuff. Um, the best player in the market right now is Sling TV. Uh, Sling TV, I believe, is owned by Dish Network, and they have all the deals in place to get you all the channels you need. Now, Sling TV, we're paying for the full granddaddy package. Uh, we're paying about 40 bucks a month, but it can start as low as 15 bucks a month. So 15 to 40 a month. All right. So we see, and this is why I said before, this is not a price savings. This is adding up. We're up to 10, 20, 35, maybe $60 a month. So look at your cable bill. Take out the internet part. Take out the discount you might be getting because you have internet, cable, and phone all with the same company and figure out what your actual cable bill is. Um, so Sling TV, the other big player in this space of, of getting you television shows that you want to watch is Hulu. Now, I don't think you need both Hulu and Sling TV. I think you need one or the other. But again, there are some things that are only available on Sling TV and some things that are only available on Hulu. So you should look carefully at what channels are available and whether that meets your needs or not as you're making this decision. Now, Hulu, again, it starts around... $10 a month, and I think you can go up to $25 or so, all right? I would say either or on Sling or Hulu, okay? But look at the channel listings. Look at what shows they offer and see where the shows you want are. We have one more um, that we've added. I have all of these except for Hulu because Sling TV does everything that Hulu was going to do for me. Um, there's one more service we added because in my household, Young and the Restless is critical. And we can never miss an episode of Young and the Restless, and we have to be able to watch those on demand whenever we want. Um, because I got rid of cable, I got rid of my DVR, I no longer have that in my setup. Um, so we also signed up for CBS All Access. And this is, uh, I believe it's like $7 a month with ads and something like $10 a month without ads. So again, I want you to look at this list of numbers and, and start having this in your head about what you might pay to get all of the channels or most of the channels you currently have. 10, 20, call it 50, 60. So we're, we're right around $60. Now, if you have premium channels, HBO, Showtime, Cinemax, Stars, things like that, a lot of those services you can, some of those services come with this granddaddy sling account. You can add HBO to your Amazon account for an extra monthly fee. You can add it to your Sling account for an extra monthly fee. And that tends to be less than if you bought HBO by itself. But just for the sake of argument, we're going to put HBO down here because for 20 bucks a month, you can buy HBO all by itself straight off the Internet. All right, so HBO, uh, that's going to be anywhere from 5 to $20 a month. So now we're up to $60 to $80 a month for cable for everything I want, plus the antenna, all right? Um, all of this stuff is fine, and we had no problem with that because, frankly, 
when I got rid of cable, I lopped about this much off of my monthly bill from Spectrum. Okay, so these are all the different things you want to look at. If there's other channels you're not sure where to get online and you're wondering, let me know. Um, one pitch I will put in for Sling as well, month, is that with Sling, you can watch it. A lot of these, you can watch them on your other devices. Um, some of the cable networks, like ESPN, allow you to authenticate in various places as if Sling were your cable provider. So if you're on the ESPN website, for instance, and you want to log in, you can say um, log in with your cable provider account, and Sling TV is the option. They're trying to get more networks into that deal, but it is a nice little bonus if you have the TBS app on your phone and you want to authenticate with your TBS account against your cable provider, Sling TV can do that. None of these other services allow that level of integration. Sling really does act like your cable provider, but over the internet. The rest of these are behaving slightly differently. So real quick, Netflix, tons of great content. Amazon Prime, tons of great content. Sling TV, this is the best replacement for a traditional cable service. Hulu has lots of live TV and lots of TV episodes that aired as recently as yesterday. And then we added CBS All Access and HBO because the shows we really want to watch are on these two networks in addition to, to the sports stuff and the movies and everything else that I want to take in. So this is sort of a minimum setup, right? Just to get you the ability to watch the channels you want whenever you want to watch them. What this doesn't include is the DVR. Now, a couple of good things. Most of these are on demand. It's either on Netflix or not. And if it's on Netflix, you can watch it whenever you want. Same with Amazon Prime, uh, CBS All Access. If you pay the fee, same thing. The shows are just there. HBO has most of their stuff on demand. Not all of it, but most. Sling TV offers a DVR service as part of its package. You pay a little extra for it, and that's why we're up in this $40 a month range. But with the DVR on Sling, you can set programs to record just like you do with your cable DVR. And that way, even if that show is not in that network's on-demand selection, you still recorded it. You can come back to it and watch it whenever you want. I believe we have something like 40 hours of DVR time available. Um, I could be wrong, but it's way more than we need for what we do. Um, if you want to record every episode of Fixer Upper, which we do, um, you can do that with the Sling package. So you just set that show to record. Now, most of the Fixer Uppers are also on demand, but eventually they fall off. So this does have the DVR function. If you want to record the big game and come back to it later, that's where you want to go. So I'm going to wipe all this out, but I'm going to leave two lines up here, uh, one time and monthly services, all right? So we're going to start making our price comparisons so that you can decide. And I know this is kind of a long conversation, but I hope that, as you guys are thinking about this, it's going to help you make the decisions a little easier. All right, so we have one-time purchases. We were up to, what did I say, 50, 50 for the antenna, 20 for the amplifier, so that's about $70 for the OTA stuff. Then we have our monthly charges, and we were up to, I'm going to say $60 is roughly where I think a lot of people are going to end up to get that really full selection of channels. $60 for streaming. Now, as I mentioned, Sling has a great DVR service, um, but there's a, sometimes there's programs that aren't on Sling that are on broadcast TV that you want to record. And by the way, how do I watch Sling on my TV? It's really easy to watch it on my laptop. It's really easy to watch it on my phone. But how do I get that up onto my beautiful 60-inch Dolby surround sound theater system in my living room, right? So what I want to talk about now is streaming devices, all right? So streaming devices, right? Lots of companies have these, and I'm going to make a recommendation, but I'm going to list out a couple of them that, that are all totally worthwhile, and I'm only going to recommend ones I've used, and if I haven't used something, I'll tell you. The number one name in the business is Roku. Um, there is Apple TV, which I have not used. We don't really have any Mac stuff in the house, so if uh, if you have a Mac and you want to, like, 
you use Apple TV and you want to shoot me some pluses and minuses of it and the costs, I would appreciate that. I really don't even know how much Apple TV costs. Um, it's a premium service, as all Apple things are, and I'm, I've read nothing but great things about it in terms of the quality of the hardware and what it looks like. They're still trying to work out some of their content deals as well. But the number one is Roku, and Roku is killing Apple TV. Roku is killing everybody else in the market right now. So Roku, you're going to need to buy one of these for each TV that you'd like to stream to. All right, so I'm going to assume you have a living room TV and no others for now, okay? The Rokus are very affordable. The low-end ones are going to run you less than $35. The high-end ones are going to run you about $110. In my living room, I pop for the $110. It's better hardware. Um, using the remote to get around is so much faster. Um, it plugs into my Ethernet connection instead of being on my Wi-Fi, so if the Wi-Fi is a little wonky, I still have a great signal on my TV. Um, this is the Roku Ultra. Um, down here at the $35 end is the Roku Express, and they have things as small as a stick, like almost the size of this marker that just plugs in the back of your uh, TV. Um, and then the Ultra up at the high end is a box about like that that you set somewhere near your television. You run a HDMI cable up to your TV. Roku's are awesome because they have all of these channels built into them. All of the services I listed before have an app on Roku, right? So it just shows up on there and you can install it. They also have tons of things that don't require any subscription fee, including the Roku channel, which just came out and has a really nice selection of movies that um, you're not going to be super excited to see, but you're going to see stuff in there where it's like, Oh, man, I remember that from a few years ago, and I really loved it. You, you go back and watch it. The Legally Blonde movies, um, one of my favorite little movies, Quigley Down Under, um, and they have them in all genres. So if you just want something to watch, the Roku has free content, and if you're going to explore what streaming is like, I would just pop the 35 bucks and get a Roku and see what that experience is like. So this is also a one-time purchase, but one for each television that you want to stream to, okay? Okay. Um, the other thing I'm using right now is Fire TV. Fire TV is from Amazon. Um, it ties into your Amazon Prime account, and all of that free streaming video that you get from Amazon as part of your Prime membership, that $10 a month we talked about, is available through Fire TV. It works a lot like the Roku. They're very similar. Um, most of them have Alexa built into them in some fashion, so you can talk to the remote control and say, Alexa, what's the weather like today? Um, you know, what's on my calendar? All the things you normally do with your Echo, you can do with this remote. Almost all the things. The intercom system doesn't work. But in terms of talking to Amazon's system, putting something on your grocery list, ordering something, you can do all of that with the remote, which is a nice bonus if that's something you do with Amazon a lot. The Fire TV stuff, again, they can run from as little as $25, and then I think the most expensive ones I've seen are somewhere in the $80 to $100 range. And again, you need to buy one of these for each television that you're going to plug into. I've had really good luck with the Fire TV. It's what I use in my office. We have the Roku downstairs. I have the Fire TV upstairs. It's a cool little device. Um, I really enjoy it. Now, to be clear, the Amazon video is available through Roku. Google Play video is available through Roku. Roku doesn't really care about your network. It just wants to get all of this stuff on your TV off of the Internet. The Fire TV also has the Sling TV app. So if you're using Sling TV in order to uh, to get all of those cable channels, you can buy the Fire TV, plug it into your television, and you'll have access to it that way. Um, like I said, Apple TV, I don't really know about the cost. I hope somebody can tell me. Um, I think those are really the three big players, and you really don't need to look any further than that. All right. So up here under our one-time fee, Assuming you have a, a one television setup, I'm going to add another. I'm just going to average this, okay? So we have like an idea. We're going to change this. We're going to add uh, $75 for streaming box. All right? So we've got almost everything we need. We have DVR service through Sling. We have all of our cable channels through a variety of services. We have um, our broadcast channels with our antenna. Uh, we have one more thing we want to look at, and that is the thing Ruth has been mentioning. Now, ah, I think Ruth was talking about the TiVo services that allow some of the streaming as well. 
I have not looked into theirs, but TiVo does have a really cool box um, that I think you will enjoy. It It's a little expensive, but there are cheaper competitors out there. So it's called the TiVo, and I'll probably pronounce it wrong, Romeo. Not Romeo like the star-crossed lover from Shakespeare's epic, but Romeo like roaming around. The TiVo Romeo is an OTA over-the-air DVR. Remember when I said if your television doesn't have a TV tuner in it, you were going to have to find one. Well, this guy will do that. You have your beautiful antenna set up, you plug it into the Romeo, and then it acts as a DVR for all of those broadcast channels. Now, the last time I looked, this thing was running around $250. All right, so this is a heavy investment if you want it. But if you want to record live over-the-air television, this guy is the best, okay? You can go on Amazon and search for OTA DVR, and you'll see a variety of things. Don't pay less than $100 for anything, all right? If you see something that says it does this for $30, skip it. It's going to be such a horrible experience, you're not going to enjoy it. But if you've got this money and you're that serious about your broadcast, I would seriously consider that. Um, there are other boxes. I have one from uh, Free Air TV in my living room. I don't use it as a DVR, although it says it will. Um, that's serious nerdery, and I had to configure a lot of things to try and get it to work. But this one, the TiVo Romeo, is a high quality. All the things you love about TiVo, skipping commercials, recording multiple programs at the same time, all of that stuff, bundled up into a nice little box specifically for over-the-air broadcast. The other nice thing about this is there is no monthly fee associated with this device. All right, so it's not $250 plus 5 bucks a month. You just buy it, ask for it for Christmas, off you go. All right, so a couple more things I want to add in here, and then we'll wrap this up. How do you know how far away your TV stations are? This is going to matter when you go to buy an antenna. Like I said, if you're in a big city, you know, but maybe you don't know which direction they are. Maybe you're out in the country and you don't know if you're closer to this metropolitan area or that one. If you go to Google and you search for, I'm looking at my notes, if you search for DTV reception map, search for DTV reception map, that's going to lead you to an FCC website where you type in your zip code and it will show you all of the TV stations, the strength of their signal in your zip code and which direction they are. So I'm in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. All of the TV stations I care about from Dallas are that way. If I wanted to get my TV stations from Denton, Texas, they're all that way. And I learned all of that from the map at FCC.gov. Just Google DTV reception map, and it should be the first or second thing that pops up. And you're looking for a site on FCC.gov. And then it's slash something, slash something, slash something. But you can just search DTV reception map, and that'll tell you where you're at. So I've been talking for a little over 30 minutes. We'll leave that up there. And hopefully you know what you're looking at now. But what you need to do now is go look at your cable bill and figure out how much you're paying just for the cable service, not for cable and Internet and everything, if you get them all from the same person. Just your cable bill. Look at the cost of that. And then start thinking about what streaming services you're going to want to use to replace that in conjunction with your antenna, right? And then make your financial decision. I will tell you the reason I actually got rid of cable was not cost. It was because our DVR box and the remote that came with it and the software interface that was provided by, Com by uh, Spectrum was terrible. I hated the experience. I saw the same channels listed over and over again. Channel 110 was the same as channel 1010, so why do I have to scroll all the way through to 1010 to see the same thing again? Um, I just didn't like the experience. The experience with Netflix, the experience with Sling TV, the interface from Roku that brings all that together is just so much nicer. It's so much better. So look at your cable cost. Look at what your streaming cost might be. Now, some of these you might already have. If you already have Netflix and you use it, you got to take that out of the equation, right? Because you're not really replacing Netflix with anything. Um, but make that financial decision and then start doing the research on what channels you have to have what channels you'd like to have but could live without, and then start looking at what streaming services. 
That's true. Ruth says when you get rid of cable, the, bun the way they bundle their services, it can make your internet bill go up. So call your cable company and ask them what your bill would be if you got rid of cable, um, which is what I did. Now, in our case, my internet bill did go up by about 20 bucks a month, and I still lowered that bill by 60 to $80 a month. So your, the financial decision is going to be different for everybody for sure. Um, but make that decision. Figure out what your one-time purchases are going to be. Um, I highly recommend an antenna. You can certainly get by without it, especially if you don't watch live sports. Um, but for 20 bucks, if you're inside a city, I think it's worth it just to have some extra channel there to, to look at when you want to. Um, the biggest thing for me when I went back to broadcast television, I've been looking for somewhere to watch Night Court forever. And there's a couple networks that do nothing but show um, – sitcoms that have been out of syndication forever. Night Court, uh, Roseanne, things like that. Last night, the A-Team came on, and if you're old enough to remember the A-Team, which I am, you're really happy. My wife was asking, what on earth is that? Because while she's my age, she never watched it. Um, but figure out what your one-time purchases are. Put all those numbers together in your head. I would very much recommend that you take one month of overlap, if you can afford to, between your cable and these streaming services excuse me, these streaming services so you can get everything set up and make sure it all works without missing the final episode of your favorite show because you ditched cable before you knew that all of this was going to work, right? So look at your streaming costs, look at your cable bill, figure out what you need to buy, and then decide if cutting the cord is going to be right for you or not. So I've gone a little longer than I meant to, and I apologize, but I appreciate you guys listening. And if this is useful to you, please like and share it. Uh, tell your friends to follow Nerd Butler on Facebook. You can find me at Nerd Butler on Twitter as well. And uh, leave me some comments with questions, your experience trying to cut the cord on cable, um, any services I didn't mention that you'd like to know more about or you think people should know about, and we will uh, move on from there. I hope this has been fun. We're going to do this hopefully a couple times a week, probably right around the same time, 10, 1030 Central Time. And uh, I'll talk to you all later. Thank you so much for joining us. Interested in more technology tips and info? Check out Nerd Butler on these platforms.